Okay, let's uh, share what we're going to be talking about today. So obviously, as you saw Jyoti on Instagram and Liz, like we've mentioned through the newsletter, we're going to be talking about mast cells a little bit today um, and how that involves in the, the syndrome mast cell activation, which is getting a lot of attention right now, obviously, with the epidemic of long COVID, post-vaccine reaction. Um, so this is cropping up in a lot of conversations and you know and we're getting more and more research and interest in this area because it seems to be playing a quite a central role in long covid um but also plays a role in, in, in quite a few other diff different conditions so we're just going to pick this apart a little bit and talk about some things involved within that and how you can influence do some things yourself to influence you know mast cell activation so you know firstly let's go through a little bit like what the mast cell is so essentially, the mast cell is, is a type of immune cell, okay? So typically, it will sit in the what we call the mucosa of our membranes of our tissue. And it, typically, like a lot of our immune system, it will sit in the, in the walls of, of the barriers of our body, which are being exposed to the outside world. So a lot of our immune system will sit in this location because it's picking up things it's exposed to from the environment. So potentially dangerous or damaging things coming into us or in contact with us. That's where our immune system wants to sit so it can respond effectively if something dangerous comes in. So in this example, you know, we have the gut. Um, so we have the gut wall here and, you know, we have the inside of the intestine here where food and all and bacteria are located. And on the inside of the, the wall, we have our immune, a lot of our immune system sitting, including the mast cell. So the mast cell effectively, what we all know is that it, you know, what traditionally we all focus on is its, is its involvement with histamine. So if the mast cell gets activated for whatever reason, it can release histamine. Now histamine is, is what's involved in the typical sort of allergic response. So, you know, with allergy, we'll get a lot of itching and swelling and like respiratory difficulty, um, all the typical sort of allergic symptoms, which seem to like, you know, crop up with MCAS as well and not quite as a severe acute reaction as, as an allergy, but in a similar way. So, um, you know, there can be multiple things that can set off the mast cell, which will go through a little bit over time. But aside from histamine, what we've actually been over, uh, able to uncover about the mast cell is it actually releases way more things than just histamine. So histamine is just one small player within the whole cascade of things that can be released from the mast cell. So it plays quite a sort of orchestral, orchestral role within the whole immune response. So in some cases, it will release histamine. In some cases, it will release what we call cytokines, which basically mediate a whole inflammatory response. And what we often a lot of people have heard about, you know, cytokine storms. So cytokines are, are things that are involved within that to upregulate inflammation in the body. Um, it can also release eicosanoids, um, leukotrienes, platelet activation factors, proteases. Um, so it can release quite a few different things and it seems to be quite intelligent in the mast cell can like, it can release just one of these chemicals in response to something. So it seems to be like lime and mold will you know, the mast cell will release cytokines, whereas other things cause it to release other, other chemicals or in response to something, it may release all of them at the same time. So we're, sti we're still not unsure like why and when that does it, but it seems to have a lot more intelligence within the cell than we give it granted for in the past. So let's go through a little bit more you know when the mast cell gets activated we typically get these symptoms like um, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the skin so you know we have hives which are like these sort of like scaly red patches that crop up in the skin itching in the skin dark rings under the eyes are quite hallmark for mast cell activation or mast cell problems and um, this this phenomenon called dermatographia which is essentially where you can apply a little bit of pressure on the skin and you can almost write on it because it, you get such a quick rapid onset of um of redness and reaction to the pressure so you know, typically you'll see this where you can actually almost write clear words on the skin because it's so reactive 
and comes up red. And you often see this flushing effect often after having a shower as well. You have hot water in a shower, it often bring up a lot of this flushing and redness. Um, but also in the gut, we'll get a lot of diarrhea episodes, um, palpitations, shortness of breath. And often these things come around because histamine is is quite, it stimulates a lot of like adrenaline, adrenaline responses in the body. And this is what we tend to be seeing in like long COVID and, and vaccine reactions. You get these sort of rapid and random onsets of being quite um, difficult to breathe, palpitations, panic attacks. And this can all be driven by this histamine release and adrenaline release that comes through this process. Um, and then headaches as well. So what we know about histamine in, in particular is it's actually quite neuroactive. So it can act almost like a neurotransmitter. So it can actually be involved in a lot of mood disorders, headaches, um, brain fog, anxiety. It can be driven a lot by the, the histamine and MCAS um, that we see here. So we see it actually involved in quite a few different conditions. So we also, we mentioned like how it's a central mechanism in long COVID at the moment. However, it's also involved quite heavily in things like psoriasis, interstitial cystitis, which is like a bladder issue, um, cardiovascular disease. So we actually know that the mast cell will sit in the, the membranes of our, or the mucosa of our arteries in the heart. So um, that can be a place where the mast cell gets activated. You get this inflammatory response in the arteries and blood vessels, um, which obviously leads to further issues. Um, asthma, same thing in the lungs. That's a barrier to the and a, and a boundary to the outside world as we bring in air into the lungs. That's where a lot of our immune system will sit, including the mast cell. So if we get activation of the mast cell in the lungs, we get we get the inflama inflammation there, difficulty to breathe, hyper reactive and sensitive to other materials coming in through the air. We get sensitive to dust and pollen um, because we have this activation going on. Mood disorders, like we discussed, histamine can be have this neurotransmitter effect. Um, but it's also been shown to be involved in things like autism. Actually, it seems to be a link between histamine, mast cell activation, food sensitivities, and autism. Um, and again, like that link with the brain and behavior um, can come from these physical immune things. And then, like we said, long COVID. So the, the main thing I want you know, a lot of people at the moment are really focused on MCAS and with, with long COVID. And um, it's, you know, we, we have this thing in, in healthcare that, we, that we're obsessed with labels and putting a diagnosis on something and naming something. And we have, we get this, um, I suppose we get this certainty and a little bit more, if we, we, we name something, we feel like we can control it and we, we have uh, control over it. So people will be will get the diagnosis. Oh, you probably have MCAS. Okay, I have, I have MCAS, and and that's their label, and it's like you know, and and therefore they, they go on to antihistamines, Dow supplementation, and that's typically where a lot of people will stay. Is they'll stay in managing the MCAS, and they go through life and be okay. It, it's my MCAS. I have MCAS. Whereas what what you need to change your mindset around is MCAS is not a disease. It's not a genetic disorder. It's more of a symptom. So it's a symptom and sign that something is keeping the mast cell sensitized and activated. And once you can start getting your mindset into that, you can start really picking this apart a little bit more. So we're gonna go through a few things that can keep the mast cell activated um, and talk a little bit more about stress and how this applies to things as our topic for today. So there can be, like we said, a lot of things that can activate the mast cells. So all different types of um, immune markers, immune sort of um, molecules. So IgE is like the allergy antibody. So if we have antibodies um, that react to a particular food, we get IgE responses that can bind to the mast cell and cause this cascade of really a lot of histamine. Or we can get IgG responses, which are more like a food sensitivity so they're not as severe and significant as an allergy, but they, they can cause inflammation. They're the more sort of insidious, low levels of inflammation that can come from food. Um, things like gluten and dairy, we can have food sensitivities, but not allergy. Um, bacterial or viral components can trigger this, which makes sense with this long COVID phenomenon, why this maybe have become a central role, um, but also hormones. And, you know, we, we can talk a little bit more estrogen and progesterone, but 
um, you know, the mast cell will respond a lot to what's going on with our hormones. So as well as these two sex hormones, cortisol is another hormone which will act on the mast cell. So what we know about cortisol, that's our stress hormone, the, the mast cell has receptors for cortisol. So what cortisol will do, if we, if we have lots of stress going on and we're stressed out, lots of anxiety, and we get cortisol releases and cortisol, not cortisol directly, but actually what we call corticotropin. So corticotropin is released uh, by the hypothalamus in our brain to trigger more cortisol production in the adrenal. So corticotropin can actually bind to the mast cell and contribute to this activation and, and stimulation of the mast cell. So what we know is that it can cause the mast cell to be activated and sensitized, but it doesn't cause what we call degranulation. So it, it can keep it activated and sensitized, but it doesn't cause the release of, of the histamine, the, the cytokines, the tryptase, the prostaglandins. So, but it can have this contributing effect. So in, in functional medicine, we're always searching for the root cause. You know, why is the mast cell activated? Are there bacterial viral components going on? Are there food sensitivities which are causing this? But stress is one thing that will, you know, particularly perpetuate the, the mast cell activation for it. So it can really dictate and influence how sensitized your immune system is to food or bacterial things lingering around. So, and it and you know it has this direct effect on the mast cell, but stress is, has quite widespread effects and can contribute to these other things that may be perpetuating and causing mast cell activation. So, you know, we know corticotropin can act directly on the mast cell, but what we know about stress is it shuts down and has a significant effect on our gut. So, with a lot of stress going on, we can develop what's called leaky gut. And if we get developed leaky guts, that's particularly where we can pick up more food sensitivities. Um, and if we have, you know, leaky gut essentially is where you get gaps in the, in, the, in the intestine wall and like whole food particles, it's easier for those whole food particles to be passed through the wall and get exposed to the immune system. And this is where we start to pick up food sensitivities. And that again, like we said, can then contribute to mast cell activation. Um, so stress, you know, can act directly on the mast cell, but can also bring around a lot of these other things that can lead to mast cell activation as well. So, you know, stress is, is a super important factor in this. And if you have mast cell activation, managing stress and reaching some sort of point of calmness and finding ways to do that within your challenge is really important for your recovery. So, you know, especially with the population of long COVID at the moment, you know, there's a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty and what is going on. And that's really driving all this fear and stress, sympathetic dominance. Um, so a lot of people are really, you know, struggling with the anxiety stress side of things, which is, you know, as we described, as we explained, it's only making the mass cell activation, the whole condition worse. And it's understandable why people are getting like this because of the lack of solutions, the lack of information, um, the unresponsiveness of, um, you know, the mainstream healthcare system and what to do with it. So it's understandable why they've got down this route. Um, but the main thing to do is try and find some sort of calmness within the storm. So whatever challenge you're facing at the moment, you know, it's going to, it is what it is and it's going to, it's gonna ride out and you, it's gonna take as long as it's gonna take. But within that process, you have to find some type of calmness, find something that gives you some stability, gives you some, some calmness within that whole process. And that's where you can really start to change the trajectory of, of, your, health, of your health. So instead of being more stressed, running around stressed out, trying to find solutions, reading every blog, uh, finding, you know, the top doctor, shopping around every doctor, that actually leads to more stress. Whereas if we can actually ground ourselves, you know, work on the things that we need to do, have an organized manner and how we go around that, you, you'll start to actually make some progress. And this is typically the point everyone gets to is that, you know, they have, they have, they get diagnosed with their health condition. They go down this road of, you know, 
declining more and more and they get to the point where they've exhausted a lot of options and there's no more options to go and that's and this is really where like they change their mindset in being this is less about you know finding the the silver bullet cure this is more about um getting into a place and creating an environment where my body can actually heal because our body needs to be in a parasympathetic zone for us to regenerate if we're stressed out and sympathetic we, we're we're not healing so we need to access this parasympathetic zone where we do have a little bit of calmness and feel a little bit more safe to access